Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Facebook Live, uh, Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Um, this one is going to be about uh, some of the supplements that are out in the market. Now, my goal in this video is not to bash what other companies are doing to try to promote my own. That's not at all my goal. My goal is to try to be the fit and, and healthiest person I can be and to help people, other folks, uh, learn how to choose products that can help them be healthy and fit as well. My passion is to really help people. And when I got into this sector of the, the business, I, I knew there, there was an amazing a bunch of plants out there that could do incredible benefits for people. When I was with 24 Hour Fitness, the largest gym and fitness chain in the world, they did a study that said, why do people drop out of the gym? And, and that's one of the biggest things I'm concerned with is people not staying with uh, with the exercise. So what was the big reason? The reason was that they didn't get results fast enough. Well, I know that there are nutrients out there that are clinically proven, published human studies, multiple human studies. You know, these studies are gold standard studies, double blind, placebo controlled crossover trials that really show some amazing nutrients and herbs and minerals and vitamins that can help you get better results sooner. And that way, get you excited and keep you motivated to want to stay in the gym, stay with the exercise so that you can maintain health. It, yeah, not just so that you can get big, but if that's your goal, that's cool. I want you to be healthy. Right now, we have almost 70% of the U.S. population either overweight or obese, and exercise can make a huge difference in this. We know that when you're carrying extra weight, you are at higher risk for cancer, heart attack, heart attack stroke, diabetes, all of these major disease killers, much higher risk when you are not in good physical health. And obviously, proper nutrition and physical exercise can improve immunity, which is even more important in these days of COVID. So uh, what I'm going to try to do is help educate you. So why should you be listening to me, right? <laughs> what am I, just another guy on social media with my own personal opinions? Well, I uh, went to college for several years. Um, and was a bio psych major. So I learned, I understood physiology. I learned how to read studies and the research out there. Um, through my research and through my studies, I found that there is a lot of misinformation out there. And so when I got into the industry, I said, oh, great. Well, let me help people get through, cut through some of this misunderstanding or misinformation and help translate some of the research to see and show people what is really effective and what isn't. And I don't want you to waste your money or I'm not going to waste my money on products that don't work. So there, unfortunately, within every sector of every industry, there are people out there whose primary motive is making money and profits. That's not mine. And I know some people will never believe me and that's okay. But what I want to show you is how to look for good ingredients that are effective, that will get you results, so you don't waste your money on products that are marketing fluff, you know, that are out there just for the sake of making profit. Now, why do I say profit? Okay, first, why, why should you trust me? I have over 30 years experience. You can look that up on LinkedIn. My name is Jeff Palmer. You can see it right there on the screen in the bottom left-hand corner. Just type that in on LinkedIn and you can see my work experience. I worked as a buyer uh, at the top level, um, category manager for Vitamin Shop. Uh, I managed over 50% of their entire products. I managed all of their sports nutrition, all of their um, weight loss, all of their bars and drinks. That was me. I was in control of buying and making all the decisions on which products to bring in. So I studied every single product that was presented to me to make sure I was bringing in the absolute best products for my employer at that time, Vitamin Shop. 
and they were second largest retailer in the country. I was the senior buyer for 24 Hour Fitness, the largest gym and fitness channel in, in the world. I was in the US at least. Um, I was a senior buyer for supplements for UNFI, the largest distributor of natural products in the United States. So I worked for some of the biggest companies at the top level, making buying decisions about which products they were going to carry. I did my research. I broke down the products. I broke down the ingredients. I looked at the, the human studies behind each ingredient to make my decisions to bring in the absolute best products for the companies that I worked for. Then I worked for supplement brands, some of the top brands in the sports nutrition industry, MRI, BSN, ProLab. I was director of product development for MRI. I was a, a business development executive um, for BSN. Um, I was a, a brand manager, managing the entire brand for ProLab. So I have a lot of experience on both sides, the buying side, the retail side, the distribution side, and even the brand side. And I saw a lot of things that were really good that we're doing, many of which I feel proud about contributing to, but many things that I didn't agree with. And, you know, I want to point some of those things out that some of the companies, and I'm not going to name any brand names, but what I will do is pull some up of these products, call out what their ingredients are in there and tell you what is actually working and what's not, what's good and what's not good and why. Okay, so let's jump right into one of the biggest things and most important things is the ingredients that they use and how much of the ingredient they're using. So for most marketing-based companies, companies that are just profit-driven, what they'll do is use an ingredient like creatine, right? Creatine is probably one of the most proven, clinically proven, efficacious, and safe sports nutrition ingredients out there, creatine monohydrate studied hundreds if not thousands of studies and all really validating its efficacy for building strength and muscle. So we know creatine works. It's it's done and it's safe. It's safe to use it even very high dosages too. I'm not suggesting that, but it is uh, safe up to I think 50 grams, which is way too much. Don't waste your money doing that. It, there's no more efficacy at about three to five grams unless you're loading. All right, so creatine, what is the dosage for creatine, the proper dosage? Well, most of the studies like Medline and, and the my favorite, the journal um, of ISSN. Um, so ISSN is probably one of the best resources for efficacy in um, sports nutrition products. They actually do a lot of the research for the sports nu uh, nutrition industry to show you what's really working, what's not, and at what, at what quantities it works. So they list um, creatine to be three to five grams a day. Now, that's really important because what you'll see in many of the top pre-workout is one gram or even less of creatine. Now, if three to five grams is what's actually clinically proven to be effective, why would anybody put one gram in there? It's not going to do much, if at all anything. <laughs> so your body actually makes about one gram of creatine per day. Adding another gram of creatine? Not so much. <laughs> you know, this is not really a, an effect that can be shown or has been re reproduced in, in studies. So when I look at companies out there using one gram or even less, like 500 milligrams of creatine, why? Because they just put creatine on the label. And the uneducated person, the person who is not aware of the research out there, who hasn't done the digging yet, will see, oh, creatine. I heard that really works really well. Not knowing that not putting enough creatine in there to do anything, to give you any positive effects in the gym and strength gains and muscle gains. So I, I looked at some of the top ones and I'll just go down the list. I'll pull them up on the uh, on my screen. So this one shows no creatine whatsoever. Okay, I'll go to the next one. And I'm looking at the top selling ones. I'm not going to list the brands out here. And they list 1.5 
grams of creatine. So uh, they are using creatine monohydrate, which is the most studied form of creatine. I actually use creatine in full disclosure. I don't make creatine because 100% of the creatine that is currently on the market is synthetic. And I have a pledge not to produce synthetic items for clean machine. I want natural items, not synthetic items. Do I think synthetic uh, creatine is safe to use? Yes, of course, I use it myself. Um, so this one, 1 1.5 grams of creatine. This is one of the top 10 best sellers in the marketplace. And that is basically one half of what is clinically proven effective. So now you could say, all right, we'll just take two scoops, right? Well, yes, that would be a good thing. <laughs> but two scoops, if you've got 200 uh, milligrams of caffeine in it, means you're going to get 400 <laughs> milligrams of caffeine. And that may be way too much for most people, especially women or people of uh, lower body weights. Um, and not something that you would want to do probably do for your overall health for a sustained period of time. And remember, creatine is best taken on a regular basis so that your body builds up stores of creatine. And so when I look at all these using one gram or less, I even, I even see the uh, I won't say the most popular because then I'll give it away <laughs> which product I'm talking about. But one of the most popular um, creatine products out there uh, is creatine nitrate, and they use one gram. Remember now, when you when you call creatine nitrate, that means some of the, the creatine nitrate is creatine and some of it is nitrate, right? So you're actually not even one gram of creatine. Some of that is nitrate. Now, that leads us to a whole nother thing on nitrates, but I'll get into that in a second when I touch on nitric oxide. So you're looking at even less than a gram. That is three times less than what you need to actually be effective with creatine. And that's a top seller. That's what the vast majority of people in the marketplace are buying and using and wondering why they're not getting results. That's a shame. And I don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see people wasting money then, then uh, on what's the most popular uh, you know, pre-workout out there, not getting clinically effective dosages of creatine, and then getting into the gym, and then not getting the results. And then you just throw up your hands and go, oh, this product doesn't work. And then you people make an assumption, oh, I tried those products, nothing works. Well, it's because they're using crappy products. They're not properly dosed. You find a product out there that will give you three to five grams and you will get results out of it. And it's not to knock any specific brand, but I want to teach you how to learn to read these labels and find out which ones are the best for you so that you can actually choose products that are going to work for you. Because if they don't work, you may start to make assumptions about all supplements. And it's not. There are bad companies out there doing bad things by putting way too much uh, stimulants and way too little of the stuff that is actually supposed to give you the real results. Increase strength gains, increase muscle gains, increase power gains, all of which creatine does. Improve body composition, lower body fat to muscle ratio. These are great things that this is clinically proven, but they're just putting too little in. Why? Why are they putting too little in? Because they don't want the product to work? No, because they put so much stimulants and beta alanine will make your skin tingle and, and be itchy and like, oh, you feel it. And it's like, wow, I feel the beta alanine. This must be really strong. I feel this caffeine. My eyes are bugging out of my head. This must be really working. No, that's just a bunch of stimulants. It's just a bunch of things to make you feel something, not something that's actually working to increase your strength and your muscle gains. That's what you should be taking. That's what's going to give you the results, not these cracked out products that are just based on stimulants and way underdosed for clinical research. So when you see these products out there with one gram or 500 milligrams of creatine, just say bye-bye. I'll look for something else. Or just buy the creatine by yourself and effectively dose it yourself. That's what I do. I just grab a, uh, a creatine from Vitamin Shop that's just pure vegan creatine, and I give myself five grams a day. That way I know I'm getting the results that I'm looking for.
Okay, let's go down to the next thing, which I just mentioned, which is beta alanine. So what is the study? Well, let's go to the number one and most clinically proven and most researched beta alanine. It's called Carnison. Carnison is a brand name. So when a company takes a product and makes it specifically bioactive, they patent that and then they brand it. So it's called a branded ingredient. Carnison is a branded ingredient of beta alanine. And almost all of the research was done on carnison. So what did the research show as an effective dose for carnison beta alanine? 3.2 to 6.4 grams with the best results coming from 6.4 grams. Now, if you look at almost all of the products out on the marketplace, they're using 1.6 grams, which is half of the 3.2, which gets you the minimal amount of results with 6.4, which means they're only 25% of that. It means you'd have to take four scoops of 1.6 uh, grams of beta alanine. Now, four scoops of something that already has three to 400 milligrams of caffeine in it is dangerous. Let's just put it that way. Don't do that. Please don't do that. If you want, go out and buy the, uh, the Carnison beta alanine yourself and dose it. Now, one of the reasons why they don't put a full efficacious dose of, carni of, of Carnison beta alanine in there is because it'll make your skin crawl. It'll feel like you have ants running up and down the back of your skin. Uh, crawling through your scalp, running down your forearms. It'll tingle and burn and be prickly. It's called parathesis. Uh, it's what it's doing is opening up tiny capillaries underneath the skin and stimulating, but it's also delivering histidine. Histidine is a, a slight irritant. Um, histidine is one of the two amino acids that make up uh, beta alanine. So this release of histidine can cause a almost an allergic response, but it's not. It's safe, it's healthy, it's okay. So what they figured out is that you have to do divided doses. So you don't get this overwhelming tingling feeling to the point at which it feels like prickly pear cactus all over your body. Um, not a good thing. It's something that I don't enjoy at all. I know some people actually like that experience. But the reason why they do this is they're putting beta alanine, remember, only 25% of the actual amount you need to get maximum benefit based on the human research of carnosine itself. Now, why did they do that? It's because so that you get that tingling feeling, not because you're getting any clinically verified beneficial effects for sports performance. So they're using the caffeine and the beta alanine to make you feel energized and make you feel tingly and make you think, oh, wow, this is so strong. It's causing these effects when nothing else in the ingredient listing is in there at appropriate doses to actually get you better strength, more muscle mass, any of that. So that's what's going on, why so many are using uh, products that give you an effect but not give you effectiveness, clinically proven dosages. So again, the beta alanine is 3.2 grams to 6.4 grams when almost all of them are out there using 1.6, which is one quarter of the maximum dose or less. Now they're just using the beta alanine as an effector, something to give you an experience. And if that experience, you say, oh, I know it's working because I can feel it, right? That's the marketing lie that so many companies out there are doing. And that's why I want to warn you with, don't, don't fall for these gimmicks of spiked caffeine or exotic stimulants that are just going to try to get you to think it's really strong because I can feel it. No, that's a lie. That's not strong. That's just oh, abuse of stimulants. That's just sprinkling in some beta alanine at non-effective dosages just to make you feel something. Don't fall for that hype. It's garbage. It's a lie. It's a marketing lie to get you to buy it. And these are the best-selling products in the marketplace. And most of them are doing this. And that's a shame because the sports nutrition industry should be about giving you real nutrition that can improve your ability to get results in the gym so that you do become healthier, you do become more fit, you do get results. 
The science is there. The ingredients are there. You just got to find a company that doses them correctly so that you do really get the results. Now, this leads me to nitric oxide. Now, there are um, four different key ways to improve nitric oxide. Why is nitric oxide? It was Pulitzer Prize winning uh, research was done on nitric oxide, the discovery of the molecule, which actually opens up our blood vessels, causes them to relax. This allows more blood flow to get to the muscle. Now, some people like it because it gives them a better pump, right? It pumps up the muscle more because there's more blood flow, more nutrients getting to the muscle. But it, more effectively, it actually really does improve uh, recovery, it improves uh, muscle gains, it improves removing lactic acid and materials away from that, so you have less damage, less soreness. So there's a lot of really good health benefits for it. And of course, uh, opening and relaxing and opening your blood vessels, which is exactly what exercise does already, this is a healthy process. This gives elasticity to your blood vessels so that you don't maintain high blood pressure. That's the hardening of the arteries that make them stiff and non-flexible so that when you need more blood, they don't really move as much. So this is actually a really healthy thing. So there are three uh, key ways that um, most people, and then I'm gonna talk about a fourth way, which I think is better than the other three ways. The first way is arginine. Um, arginine is an amino acid that you can get from foods. Actually, soy is really high in arginine. It's about three to four times higher in arginine than whey protein is. So if you're looking for arginine, you can get it from, from um, consuming soy products. So, but arginine is actually not the best uh, way to do that. It's, uh, there's a nitric oxide cycle that has three parts to it. Arginine, citrulline, and then ENOS, which is um, uh, nitric oxide synthase, endogenous nitric oxide synthase endothelial. So uh, the, the three parts are that the body takes citrulline, converts it to arginine, and then, and then adds it to uh, nitric oxide synthase, which then creates the nitric oxide molecule and releases it. So that's one of the ways that our body can create nitric oxide. Well, Studies have shown that citrulline is up to two times more effective than arginine. When we consume arginine, our body actually takes arginine and back converts it to, our, to citrulline and then sends it through the citrulline arginine enos nitric oxide cycle. So why are so many companies out there using arginine instead of citrulline if citrulline is up to two times more effective and better? It's more efficient. You need, um, well, here's part of the rub. Arginine's cheap. <laughs> Therefore, they use arginine out there. And citrulline requires much more of the amino acid. Up to six grams is the clinical dose. There is actually one sports nutrition brand out there that has it properly dosed at six grams of citrulline, but almost all of the rest of the companies are using very small amounts of citrulline, not enough to significantly increase nitric oxide levels in, in the bloodstream. So what about arginine? What is the, so most of the studies that show positive results ergogenic results. Ergogenic means that they actually increase performance, that's strength, that's uh, endurance, that's muscle size and, and gains. So two to three grams of arginine is what's required based on the research out there. Now, when I see the companies out there using half a gram or even one, one gram, this is two to three times underdosed. It means you're not getting any effects hardly at all from the arginine. And this is a shame because it can be effective. <clears throat> One of the reasons why you need so much of it in there is because the arginine citrulline cycle is very quick. The body utilizes up the arginine very quickly and dispenses of it very quickly. So cycles it out as ammonia. <clears throat> now, that led to many of the people who first launched arginine products to put it in a pill and, or rather a tablet, and then give it a slow release. So it's releasing the arginine a little at a time so that you have a continuous result. 
This worked a lot more effectively based on the research when they had a, a time release mechanism to it. But when you get in at a pre-work as a powder, it's much more difficult to make it time release because you're getting basically all of the arginine all at once and then the body's using it up very quickly. So you don't get a sustained uh, nitric oxide pump, which will really help your body in the recovery process from your workouts. Okay, so arginine is not as, as effective. You need two to three grams a day based on the research. And uh, the Journal of Nutrition uh, study showed that citrulline is actually up to two times more effective than arginine. So if you're going out there, the proper dosage, <coughs> excuse me, is about five to six grams of citrulline. If you're gonna use citrulline all by itself, more effective than arginine is the better of the two options. Now, there's another, uh, process called nitrates. So when we eat nitrates in our food, which is in dark greens, uh, generally spinach is high in nitrates. Those nitrates hit our tongue, uh, turn to nitrites. Then that nitrite hits our stomach acid and our stomach acid converts the nitrite into nitric oxide. This helps us replenish and stimulate the mucosa lining, but also goes right into the bloodstream and then helps us with vasodilatory effects. Now, just by taking a 500 milliliter uh, dose of uh, liquid beet juice can sustain nitric ox oxide levels up to 48 hours. Some showed even positive effects for two to three days. Now, this is really good because this is a truly sustained effect of nitric oxide, benefits that you can get long term from whole foods like spinach or beets. Now, there are supplement companies out there that are putting nitrates in isolated nitrates. Now, when you isolate a nitrate, when it hits our gut, it can form nitrosamines. Nitrosamines are a very carcinogenic compound. We don't want this. And this is why I personally would never use an isolated nitrate in anything that I do. Uh, I would not take that. I would not consume it at a risk for nitrosamines. Now, some people have learned to combine antioxidants like cheap vitamin C in there to try to help neutralize this, but is it really canceling out all the nitrosamines? We don't know. I've never seen any research to verify that. So um, I personally would stay away from nitrates altogether because of the risk for nitrosamines, which are known to cause cancer. Um, they are a very high-risk carcinogen uh, as has been exposed by the science. All right, so what is the fourth type? The fourth type, I think, is the best type, and I'll tell you why. That is polyphenols from plants. So it's amazing because polyphenols, what they do, now nitric oxide is a very volatile, it burns up and can be used and destroyed very quickly and getting out of the body. But what polyphenols can do is upregulate the production. That's your own body making nitric oxide. They upregulate that. So your body is creating more uh, nitric oxide. That's awesome. But what it also does is protect the nitric oxide from being destroyed by oxidation and maintains a longer effect. So this company is, is a great company called Futureceuticals. They actually put together seven different high polyphenol compound plants um, and put them together and just a small 50 milligram dose, not grams, 50 milligrams, that's a thousandth of a gram, 50 milligram dose was so effective it increased nitric oxide by 230% and it lasted for over three hours. Now that's amazing. And that is the healthy way to do it. Not something that causes cancer, not something that's going to be out of your system in a matter of minutes. This is sustained, healthy approach to doing nitric oxide. And why nitric oxide is so important because it increases that blood flow to the muscle, help you get oxygen and nutrients so you can work out longer and last longer, but also so those waste materials from your workout can get away from the muscle and cause less muscle damage.
So nitric oxide is a great thing, but there's a healthier way to do it. And that's why I use S7. S7 is the ingredient we use in N10s, our pre-workout formula, because it's polyphenol based. This is a healthy, natural, plant sourced way to increase your own body's production of nitric oxide and then protect those nitric oxide molecules so they last for over three hours. That's been proven clim clinical human studies. That's the way you want to do it. Okay, so let's move on to caffeine. Caffeine, most of the caffeine out on the market used is synthetic caffeine, caffeine anhydrous. It's made by chemicals in a lab. And look, uh, you know, caffeine is caffeine. You can get it from lots of different natural sources as well, like green coffee bean extract, which is what we use. We use pure calf, which is from organic green coffee beans. And we use it in a low dose, 100 milligrams, compared to the two, three, four, and even more 100 milligrams than these high dosed. Uh, uh, caffeinated products out there. And they're doing that to make you feel it's strong. No, the caffeine is strong. If you want more caffeine, drink a cup of coffee or, or have some tea or whatever. You know, don't do that to your body. That overstimulation can drain you of your energy, make you restless and get you poor sleep. And if you're not sleeping well, you're not rebuilding muscle well. And that's just the antithesis of what you want. Plus it can spike cortisol. Cortisol stores fat and tears up muscle tissue. It's exactly what you don't want to get out of the gym. So the next thing is a ingredient that I actually do like. It's called betaine or trimethylglycine. That is its more proper chemical name. But betaine was first discovered in beets where it gets its name from. Uh, betaine is actually a really health promoting thing. Um, beets were first identified to have it, but to be honest, spinach and even wheat germ are two to three two to four times higher in betaine. Betaine is really important because it helps detoxify homocysteine, which can cause arterial damage, cardiovascular disease, and lead to other disease states too. So having a lowering your homocysteine levels, your blood homocysteine levels, very important to overall health, and betaine can really help uh, with that as well. Now, for clinical performance, it's uh, been shown in uh, published human studies to increase strength, very similar to creatine, at about 25% increase in strength when used at the proper dosage. So what is the proper dosage? The, the dosage that was used in studies for betaine is 1.25 grams taken twice a day. So that's two and a half grams a day. That's effective effective at increasing strength, but it's also been shown to actually uh, help your body burn fat too as well. Fat reduction levels have been shown in both men and women using betaine. So I really like this ingredient. It promotes health, which uh, lowering homocysteine levels and gets you uh, fitness gym. So why don't I use it? Well, it's hard to dose. Most people, when they take a pre-workout, they take it before the workout and that's it. So if you're putting 1.25 grams in there, you're not really getting enough and you're not taking it often enough. So I, if I ever did it, I would produce a separate betaine product that you take once with your pre-workout and once post-workout or later in the day. That's the proper way. That's the way it was used in the, in the research. And that's what's clinically proven to get you those better results. My guess is that uh, sometimes when you take a bolus, which is a, a whole quantity, like if you took all the 2.5 grams of betaine all at once, the body wouldn't effectively utilize it. It would use some and disregard the rest. If you do it in divided dosage, your body will use almost the 1.25 grams and then will later in the day be ready for another gram dosage and be able to use that. Then you give yourself a sustained effect across the day and provide more of the uh, results in strength gains and muscle gains and fat loss that you see in the studies because that's the way it was used in divided dosages. These pre-workouts are just saying, oh, okay, 1.25 grams twice a day. I'll put 1.25 grams in it. Okay, well, that's half the dose shown to be effective unless you're going to take a pre-workout. But most people don't take a pre-workout second time later in the day. Some people do, <laughs> but 
So that's another thing to look for um, is that although I find B10 very effective, I wouldn't put it in a pre-workout because that's not the way most people use a pre-workout, which is one and done. Um, you would not be getting the effective amount of dose if you take it that way. All right, and then some of the other hidden ingredients. People will put sodium in there and you can see it as sodium phosphate, sodium bicarbonate, sodium this, sodium that, all combined in there. Why do they put sodium in there? Because sodium retains water. So when you're drinking a pre-workout, it's got water in it. And you take sodium and you put it in there, you're going to get water retention. Well, what does that look like when you're looking at in the mirror when you're working out? Well, it pulls that sodium into the muscles and pulls that water into the muscles. And it makes you look puffy, makes you look bigger. Yeah, that's great. Taking sodium every day in your pre-workout plus all your packaged food, this is not a healthy approach. You should not be adding sodium. We don't really need to be adding sodium to our to our regimen anytime, any day. But again, they're using this ingredient to give you a false sense of effectiveness of the product. You know, you work out, you're drinking all the water, it's full of sodium in there. And look at the levels of the levels of sodium right on the label. It'll show you right at the top of the label. They're doing that to get you a puffy effect while you're working out. Don't fall for that gimmick. That's not real muscle, that's water retention. <laughs> now, creatine can do a little bit of that too. So yes, you are gonna get a little puffy and a little water retention from creatine, but that creatine drains and it doesn't have the ill effects, a long lasting ill effects. Um, high sodium levels can lead to hypertension and other disease states. So you don't want that. That's no need to be adding sodium to your pre-workouts. Again, they're doing this. They're adding these things to give you a false sense of, oh, I'm getting bigger in the gym. No, you're getting puffy full of water retention. <laughs> That's not the same thing. And, and the reason why I'm telling this is not to bash or call out any other companies. That's not it. I would love to see every one of these companies say, you're right, I'm going to stop doing that. Let's change and let's give people the best products so that they get real results in the gym. That would be exciting because then people would get excited. People would trust supplement companies again, especially sports supplement companies. We've gotten such a bad rap because there are too many people out there pulling these gimmicks of of sodium to, to water attention, of, of underdose products. Of Here's another thing that is doing, borrowed science. So all of the, the science is done on carnison, a very specific type of beta alanine. And then other companies will come out there and just use cheap synthetically made stuff from China uh, and that is, that is actually technically illegal on patent violation. And then using the claims of the branded ingredient, which can be very different. So when we have branded ingredients, that's the actual ingredient in the form that it's made, used in the study. Now you can't just take ashwagandha that has been that has been actually very carefully bred to have high certain rates of phytoactive nutrients. This one can have super high rates. They standardize it for that. So you make sure you get exactly like that, which is in the KSM 66 ashwagandha that we use in our products. That is research driven. They did the study on that ingredient. Now somebody else will come along and say, oh, I've got ashwagandha in mine, but it had practically none of the phytoactive that are actually giving the results of the KSM active material. And they say, oh, I got ashwagandha at the same dose that they do, but you don't get the same results. Why is that? Because they're not using the clinically proven patented forms of that ashwagandha that actually are standardized for certain nutrients and bioactives that get you the results. You can't just take that cheap, crappy ashwagandha, stick it in there at the same dosage and think you're going to get the same results. That's why I am committed to using these patented branded ingredients. If you look at Intense, we have four ingredients in there. All four are patented branded ingredients backed by published human studies. The exact ingredients in, used in the studies, the exact amounts used in the studies so that you know you will get or have a greater chance of getting uh, similar results as to those that were used in the studies. Now, studies, 
you know, our studies are what they are. Every individual may have varying results and that's understood. I hope you understand that and saying, but at least this gives you the best opportunity to have similar results. Uh, creatine, for example, some people just don't respond well to creatine at all. They're called creatine non-responders. It's a good name for them. Um, so if you do not get a, a good response from creatine and you are a creatine non-responder, that's why I talked about betaine because betaine can be used by other people to get similar strength gains and, and, and benefits similar to creatine. If you use it in the proper dosage, you just got to have to use it in divided doses because that's at least how the studies have clinically proven it to work. Um, so these are the difference between cheap ingredients and patented clinically proven ingredients that have real human studies behind that. All four of our uh, ingredients are there. And I'm going to go over some of the benefits found in these ingredients based on that. The first one is um, an uh, ingredient called RIP factor. Now, RIP factor is a really interesting ingredient because it was developed using AI, artificial intelligence. So they use computers to basically scope out, hey, what is the best uh, combination of ingredients? And then they found this amazing um, uh, Indian globe thistle, combined it with another ingredient that had synergistic benefits to it. And they found that that gave the best results. And boy, does it. I love this. Now, two clinical studies support strength, endurance, muscle, and even increases in free testosterone. And that's used by both men and women. So don't be scared of the, uh, uh, of the intense product because both men and women, when you exercise, your testosterone will naturally increase. Helping support your body in that process will get you better muscle gains and can get you better uh, body composition. So that's your ratio of muscle to fat too. So don't be afraid of that. But here are the results of their research research. Two eight-week double-blind placebo-controlled trials of RIP factor um, is studied in two separate different levels with remarkable results. Um, showed up to a four times greater improvement in muscle size, that's the muscle gains, and up to two times improvement in muscle endurance. That means you can last longer, and this is great because it can be used by endurance athletes as well, not just those looking to gain strength. Up to five and a half times greater in upper body improvement and five times greater in lower body improvement as far as strength gains. So strength, muscle, size, and endurance. All of the benefits you're looking for in a really amazing uh, ingredient. And that it worked quickly. Within 14 days, they already had statistically significant increases in strength. And at 30 days, even better. And at 60 days, even better. So you're talking, as the longer you use it, the more benefits it's getting. These are clinically published results. This is a wonderful thing. The next ingredient, the S7. Um, it's seven natural plant-based ingredients. Very low dose and 230% increase in nitric oxide boost lasting up to three hours. That's, that's just awesome. No nitrate in it at all. It is using these amazing polyphenol rich plants. The next ingredient is one of my favorites. It's called Zynamite. It's patent pending and it's made from mango leaf extract, standardized for 60% mangiferin. So Again, don't don't look on the and the label and say, oh, that's a mango leaf extract. Somebody else has got a mango leaf. No, this is the patented standardized for very high mangiferin. Mangiferin is this uh, phytonutrient that is actually the key to helping improve performance. How does it improve performance? It improved power output by up to 15%. Peak power output by up to 19%. That's your burst strength. That's the really good way to get yourself to lift more in the gym. It improved VO2 max, great for endurance athletes, up to 6%, and brain oxygenation by 11%. This is something that I actually 
feel when I first take it is more oxygen to the brain. The brain takes up about three to 5% of our body mass, yet uses up to 20% of our total oxygen. So it's an oxygen hog. Um, but our brain can increase its uh, body's ability to uptake oxygen and then make our brains function at a much higher level. And that's what I love about this Zynamite. And I use Zynamite because I wanted to bring down the caffeine level to make it safer and healthier and make, make it more usable by more people who don't want to get uh, overstimulated or can't uh, do higher amounts of caffeine. And then use the Zynamite, which is non-stimulant, but helps your brain increase the oxygen uptake. So you get that brain buzz, that focus, that intense me mental focus, which is why I named the product Intense, because of this amazing mango leaf extract. Uh, reduced mental fatigue and stress, uh, enhanced attention and improved reaction time. So um, great for performance athletes out there that are uh, football, basketball, baseball, tennis. This is a really cool product for mental focus, reaction time, awesome stuff. And it's stimulant free. So you're getting all these brain benefits without having to use high amounts of caffeine to get you there. And then of course, the fourth ingredient is pure calf. Pure calf is uh, 100% organic green coffee bean extract. So this is this is what I wanted to put forth, something that will get you the strength gains, get you the muscle gains, get you the fat burning, get you the test boost, get you all of these things clinically proven, dosed properly. You can use a single dose or a double scoop for even maximal results in the, uh, in the gym too as well. So that's what I want to prove to you. But I also want to show you how, if you are going to use other products out there, some of the ones that are good, how much to use to get you to an effective level, and some of the ones that are so underdosed and many of the products out there don't waste your money on. Uh, and again, I don't say this to, to uh, you know bash any other company. I don't wish harm to any other company out there. I do wish other companies would put effective amounts. I wish they would put get away from just trying to overstimulate and, and cheat people into thinking that something's going on when they're really not getting true, uh, true physical fitness results. Um, and then lastly, watch out for the synthetics uh, versus natural. A lot of these companies are using artificial sweeteners, artificial colors, artificial flavors. Some of these artificial sweeteners have been shown to cause cancer in, in laboratory animals. I just not would want any of that crap in my body. Um, look for the ones that are clean label, that are non-GMO, that are gluten-free, that are certified vegan. Uh, we use a vegan certification company that is the only globally recognized ISO certified. This is the highest rating that you can get out of a vegan and there's only one out there and we use that. That's the one we use, the only one run by vegan lawyers. So they're looking at every single little detail to make sure that this is a vegan product for you. We use the best, we go out of our way. And then of course, stay away from companies like Blackstone Labs. I don't know if any of you have heard it, but the, the executives of Blackstone Labs are being sentenced right now. I think one just got four years in jail for putting steroids in their products. Look for ones that are tested clean. So yeah, be safe. Know who you're buying from. Know what it is that is properly dosed to get you the results because I want you to get results. I want you to get the results in the gym so you stay excited about working out. So you keep working out and stay fit and healthy for your health. I want the best of health for you. Whether you use our products or somebody else's, at least use something that's going to work for you. I hope this information is useful for you. If so, please share so we can get this information out there and get people buying the products that are actually work. There are good brands out there doing the right thing, using the right amounts in there, using ingredients that are truly used in the studies, the patented forms of the ingredients. There are good companies doing the right thing, you know, putting in there and not putting in a bunch of fluff. Um, and part of that reason is out there that they're spending, these big companies are spending millions of dollars on advertising. How did they get those millions of dollars in advertising? 
Well, by overcharging you for something that has low value, putting very cheap ingredients in there, way underdosed, using too little amounts, so they can sell it to you for 20 or 30 bucks and make you know <laughs> a big amount of profit, so they can afford to spend millions of dollars in advertising. I mean, we have a very little <laughs> budget on advertising, just to let people know what we've got and how now how much ours is better than most of what's out on the market. There are good brands and good products out there doing the right thing. Look for them, even if you don't want to use ours or you don't want to use that, you can use whole food nutrients too as well. There are different ways. Some of the ingredients that I talked about, unfortunately creatine, if you're vegan, is, is not very, uh, is just basically not out there. So supplementing with creatine is really the route to go if you want to do that. It has been shown to work even better in vegans and vegetarians and even improve IQs and published human research. So many benefits to using creatine. I think it's one of the best, safest uh, ingredients out there if you are going to use that. And there are vegan versions. Look for a certified vegan version if you are vegan. Make sure you're getting the good stuff. Thanks for joining me. We'll break it down, give you the straight truth on everything and hoping you get the best health and fitness results in the gym on the courts, in the pool, on the bike, on the streets, on the bike path, anywhere that you're using physical fitness, in the yoga room, Pilates room, however you choose to do physical fitness, use nutrients and nutrition, whether it's from whole food plants or from supplements to help you get better results so that you can be around and be healthy and live a long and prosperous life. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you next week.